Without a single doubt, the G40 is Gundarium tier. But that doesn't mean this is for everyone. All it takes is one look at that box right there and you know that what we have in here is something extremely special. This right here is a high grade unlike any other that we've seen before and this is to celebrate both the 40th anniversary of Gundam and the 40th anniversary of Gundam model kits. This right here is the Ken Okiyama Design Cross Bandai Hobby Center G40 Gundam. And like I said, all it takes is one look at that box and you know we've got something special. Metallic silver on matte black, this is a classy box right here. And as for what we get inside of this box, this is the high grade 144th scale Gundam industrial design version, aka the G40. When it comes to standard 144th scale high grade Gundams, this is without a single doubt the most unique one I have ever built and ever looked at. Before I actually got this Gunpla right here in my hands, I wasn't a big fan of the design in general. But that's one thing I love about Gunpla. After the build, it can completely change your opinion on a design and that's what has happened to me right here. This thing is phenomenal. You will not find articulation like this right here in anything, and I mean anything, when it comes to mecha. And definitely when it comes to high grade Gunpla. This is phenomenal. However, I will mention that this high grade right here is not for everyone because of one particular reason. Because of the simplistic design elements, the color, the look of the joints, etc. This does not look like a scale model of a 20 meter war machine. This just straight up looks like a toy. Again, this particular aesthetic will appeal to a lot of people, but it may not appeal to some. But all in all, this is Gundarium tier. This is fantastic. And let's take a closer look at it. And once again, I will mention that this video right here would not be possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you do want one of these of your own, there is a link down there in the description. And speaking of Hobby Link Japan, introducing HLJ Pop. So this is their own line of anime stuff, which is pretty awesome. And the first thing they've released right here is this line of rubber straps called Animemories. Starting with the anime Dororo. So inside this big old box we do get 10 different ones. If you get the whole box you get every single one of them. And I will mention that these are massive. I have a whole ton of anime rubber straps and they're not nearly as big as these. But anyway we've got 10 of these which is this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So once again, the link will be down there in the description if you want to check them out. But anyway, on to the review. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I'm taking a look at this right here. Of course, this is the high grade Gundam industrial design version. That is G40. It is Ken Okiyama design cross Bandai Hobby Center and there it is. Straight off the bat I will mention that when I did see this first I did complain a little bit about the design etc but I'll say right now straight away it's won me over. Typical. So this right here is what the high grade G40 looks like out of the box just snapped together with a little bit of panel lining and all of the stickers attached which aren't a whole lot really. And the first thing I will mention about this kit is there is no other high grade even remotely like this. This is a completely different and unique build right here. And speaking of the build, for such a well designed kit this is deceptively simple and I guess that's what makes it super well designed. In the box we get 5 runners, there is no polycaps. That is an A runner which is split into the majority of the colors that are on this kit. We've got 2 C runners, these are identical of course for our identical parts from the arms, legs, etc. We've got runner B then, that is for all the other white parts of this kit. And the final runner we have in here then is just for, well, mainly the hands. And these are some super dainty itty bitty hands in here. Besides that though, we've got a set of two beams. These are from 2013, so nothing new about these. And that right there is the sticker sheet. So there is only one color correcting sticker on here. I'll mention that last, but besides that, we've got a choice between different stickers for the eyes, that's yellow or pink. We've got a big long shiny strip, that's for along the top of its head. And finally then number four then is for on the crotch. So basically it goes right there. So that little thing that's always on Fetty mobile suits, well, that rarely is ever color separated. So that's not all that different from usual. Besides that, then the only other stickers are the two for on the head. That is the choice of eyes. I went with the pink because the yellow doesn't match the strip on the head. That is literally the only reason why I picked the pink. Also, the yellow ones here don't reflect light as well. So in a video that doesn't particularly look as good, but if you want to go for that classic yellow, you can. And as for that big old strip there, that's number three. That's this shiny pink mohawk, which is part of the redesign. 
And I'm assuming it's a camera that can see all the way from the front of the head to the back of the head instead of the usual front back situation we have. And as for the rest of the redesign right here, it's kind of hard to describe because it's not necessarily modern, it's not edgy, it's just kind of different. But all of that is kind of talked about in this little manual you get with it. And this is not the standard manual for putting it together. This is a whole series of interviews, designs, etc. This thing is really cool. I'm not going to show everything from it in the video because they did put a lot of work into it and I just kind of feel just flicking through it in the video is a bit on the disrespectful side. But this is in both Japanese and English. If you're into art books, if you're into design, etc. Want to know the general gist behind this right here. This is absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend getting this kit right here, even just for this. But of course, Gundam's awesome too. Reading through this right here does clarify a lot of the design aspects of this particular kit. For example, a lot of people were a bit shocked at the design of the, well, it's diaper. That whole waist section does not move at all and kind of gets in the way of the articulation, so they redesigned the articulation around moving around that. That is described in here. Basically, Ken Okiyama is an old school Gundam fan. The old school Gundam never separated at that point, so he didn't want to destroy that original design aspect of the Gundam. That's why it's got that kind of design thing going on down there where the legs can drop out from under the diaper. A couple of other aspects mentioned in here is the whole rounded out chest section of the Gundam is based on a car's fender. On top of that, there is a bit more info of how the core fighter design concept has been changed slightly too to something a little bit more realistic. Of course, this isn't actually a functioning gimmick in the model kit itself. This is just part of the design concepts, but it's pretty cool to read about. And another example is the design of the shield, which has these what's referred to as recessed segments. So these kind of concave segments along the side, almost like a kind of beveling, which according to the shtick in this book right here, wasn't actually from Ken Okuyama at all. It was asked for by someone from the CG team because they thought it was a good idea by the same things. On reading through this awesome book, you basically do get the gist of every single aspect of the design on this. All in all, pretty cool. And the last thing I will mention about this book is we do have a whole bunch of early design concepts of ways this project could have went. And I have to say, out of them all, I would have chosen any one of these besides the one that we actually got. But that is just a personal opinion. The model kit is still awesome. Definitely this right here is awesome and does clear up a lot of the design elements of this right here. But honestly, to me this just looks like someone tried to draw a Gundam from memory. You know when you've got the basic gist of what it looks like but you can't remember the particular elements. That's what this looks like to me. So of course the visual redesign of this is only half of it really because this has been re-engineered from the ground up. This is not like any Gunpla you've ever built before. And once again, just like the design, this is something that I believe will divide a lot of Gunpla fans. The reason is, is because of a lot of this sort of stuff. Lift up its neck, that isn't a scale model neck, if you get what I mean. That does not look like a functional neck of a 20 meter robot. Not that the usual polycap does, but it gives the impression from a distance of something, you know, gray and mechanical. This is just white plastic and it's a, well, it's a joint. The same goes inside the torso as well. This is just a series of joints in here. I'll pop that off so you can see. It looks like that. This is just to get the most functional movement out of this kit as humanly possible. So it is completely abandoning the fact that it is meant to be a scale model of a huge, huge Gundam. However, if you don't care in the least about that sort of thing, about the whole scale robot thing, well, you're going to be absolutely blown away by the crazy articulation this kit has. I have never seen anything like this before. Not in a high-grade Gundam, that is for sure. But we'll save that for later. Simplicity and Extremely Retro seems to be the name of the game here, while still kind of maintaining the look of a late 70s toy. So when it comes to surface detailing, panel lining opportunities, etc., it is a bit on the vacancy side. We've got a lot of these tiny little one millimeter, well, slashes or lines everywhere, up on the shoulders, on the legs, etc. And these only seem to serve the purpose of having something there, not necessarily anything else. As you'd expect, the plastics used in this are absolutely top notch. They are fantastic to work with, don't mark at all, but the colors are a bit on the toyish side. This is definitely harnessing that old school original Gundam toy line kind of feel, that original 40 years 
of Gunpla vibe, they really are trying to bring a lot of the original fans back to that 40 year old Gunpla and that I totally get. But that does mean that it does look a little bit, once again, kind of toyish looking. Of course, that is neither a negative or a positive point. It really does depend on your own perspective, your own likes and dislikes. For example, if you want something that looks like a scale model of an 18 meter robot, well, that's what the real grade is for. Why would they try and do that again? What they've done here is pretty cool. They've taken the old school toy-like feel that a lot of people would remember about Gunpla and given it awesome engineering that kind of brings it into the modern age. This is a mix of retro and modern Mari together and that is pretty damn rad. As for a size comparison, there it is beside the real grade Gundam Mark II, the high grade Earth 3 Gundam, and I will mention this is, and believe it or not, the first ever 144th scale Granddaddy Gundam that I have ever built. No joke. So that does mean I don't have one to actually size comparison with it. So, uh, there's the high grade Penelope. That'll do, right? <laughs> Anyway, this is a bit of an interruption from way later on. I've finished the review and everything at this point and I realized I forgot to mention, this does not have the normal hole in the crotch for using with an action base. It actually doesn't come with an adapter or anything. That is a super negative point that I hate because while I'm trying to set up some poses, it's either use that really crappy U-shaped adapter for using with one of Bandai's action bases, which I absolutely and utterly hate, and these I find a little bit too restrictive for kind of posing kits in front of a camera. That's why I always use this. People ask me what it's from and it is a Figma stand. I find them the easiest to use. They're just quick to pose, easy to line up in front of a camera, etc. But not so great when you're trying to hold them up with one of these claw segments. So my biggest beef with this kit is the lack of a hole somewhere to stick it in. I know it's a aesthetic reason, but uh, I prefer when there's a hole in there. So now moving on to the accessories and here is the high grade G40 with absolutely everything that it comes with. So it is just your standard sword, board and beam rifle as you'd expect with a standard Federation mobile suit. On top of that we also have some hands as well that is a pair of widespread open hands, a pair of holding hands and one right hand for holding the beam rifle. As for onboard weapons, the standard granddaddy, all it has is the pair of Vulcans up there in its forehead. As for the hands that come in this kit, they're very, very small, but they're extremely detailed. We also have a nice little joint in the wrist here, which allows them to flex and extend, so that's pretty cool. That's in every single one of them. They just pop into the wrist section like so, so that is as simple as they can come. Simple yet awesome. First off, as for weapons, the first thing we have in here is the beam sabers. These are your standard beam sabers. There's nothing really all that interesting about them. Nothing has been redesigned here. So pretty much what you would have seen before. One thing I will mention here is that the articulation for the wrist is actually towards the rear of the hand, not where we would normally see it. So that does mean it does look a little bit on the, well, somewhat goofy side. If you align it like this, you may not really notice, but it is attached towards the back in a kind of funny way. As usual with the granddaddy when these are not in use, just pop out the beams. The design of where the beam saber is attached has been redesigned. These just spin up like so. The beam sabers pop on like this. I will mention that the design of this is just a simple peg into a hole. So the actual act of rotating them can just make them, well, fall out. So be careful of dropping them like I have already. But anyway. That's what they look like, stored away. Next up in here then we've got the beam rifle. This is quite compact and a really cool little redesign. We've got multiple points of articulation on this, which I'll show you in a second. We've got two colors, that is the almost black that makes up the majority of it. The yellow in there in the side. It's pretty cool to notice that we also have a rail on top, but there is nothing you can actually use with that. It's just a nice little design element. As for the moving parts, this side can move side to side as it usually would. The front handle segment, that can also move side to side as well, but we also have a nice yet delicate feeling joint inside of this, which allows it to move up and forward like so, and back all the way to here. So that's pretty cool. So that's it all the way back in its standard position, and that's it rotated all the way to the front. Pretty nice. We only get a right hand for holding onto this, and that is the usual case. Anyway, that just pops in like this. This holds in incredibly well into that half of the hand, I will mention. For such dainty hands, they hold on well. The front segment just sandwiches on like so. And that right there is what it looks like once it's attached to the Gundam. So it is quite small, quite compact, 
And in essence, this is a very, very nice redesign right here. Out of all the weapons and equipment in here, nothing has been redesigned as much as this right here. I have to say straight away, this is pretty cool. The shield now features a narrower slit up top for looking through. The standard yellow symbol that we usually see on the Gundam shield has been replaced by this interesting white for segmented variant. This is cool. And without a doubt, the best aspect about this is what is going on around here. There is a whole lot of attachment options right here. So first off, I'm going to remove this little peg segment here so you can see what we have. And what we have is two handles, one up top here, one down bottom here, as well as that we have this little adapter segment. So the round section you can see on this side, that is your standard three millimeter peg for slotting into it. On this side then is the same as this slot right there in the G40's arm. And as you can see right here, we do have two separate holes for that. So that can be attached in either of those segments. So with the two handles, we also have those two slots for using the adapter. So quite a lot going on here. So option the first, and this is always my go-to option for a shield, is just pop in the adapter up here like this. Just cram it into the slot on the side of its arm. And there you go, the shield is attached, simple as. And this holds on pretty well, so that's not going to fall off. As for the other options, these take a little bit more effort. The first is to flip out the upper handle like so. In order to get this into the hand, it is a bit annoying because unlike the beam rifle, this isn't fitted to the hand. So that does mean it does kind of wiggle around a little bit when you're trying to sandwich the fingers onto that. When you do get it in, it's an all right enough hold. Once again, it is not fitted, so it will wiggle around a little bit. And that right there is what it looks like held. So it's kind of holding it in a almost ready to shield bash sort of pose. So that is the upper handle right there. The last option then is to use the lower handle like so. So this once again pops into the standard holding hand. Surprisingly enough, even though this is a cylindrical grip, it doesn't really move around in the hand when the hand is fully tightened. So that is pretty cool. This then is pretty much the same as what I showed you originally just by sticking it in using the peg, except this time it's in the hand into the wrist and then the peg attaches into the forearm. So this is pretty much a similar grip, just actually held in the hand for a super ultimate secure grip. And that looks killer. Finally, there is the high grade G40 with all of its loadout equipped. And all I can say is everything right here is simple yet perfect. No complaints and that shield is awesome. So now moving on to the most interesting aspect of this kit, and it is the most interesting aspect because this is what they focused on the most with this kit, and of course that is the articulation and the posability. So the first thing I will mention before actually getting onto all the joints and stuff is, for the most part, the build is quite solid. But as is the case, when you give joints more range of motion, in general they tend to be a little bit weaker and a little bit more fragile. So this is a kit that even though it is quite a solid, awesome build, it does have some parts that are quite prone to popping off. I also find in some standing poses, this foot part tends to just go like this on me. So this is a little bit on the weak side. It is very nice articulation, but it does mean this can be a little bit annoying at times, especially on a glass table like this. So as usual, starting from the neck down, and this is one impressive neck. Like, check out this massive giggity, giggity, giggity goo right there. That is insane. And that's just a taste of what's yet to come. So, of course, a lot of the joints in this just look like joints. Articulation is the name of the game and the engineering of that articulation. So that means they don't necessarily look all that pretty. But anyway, we've got one joint up top for that up and down up there. The second motion is in the torso there in the neck. As you can see with that whole section that moves right there. That is incredible. We also have another joint right there that gives us the rocking side to side there. That is awesome as well. And that can rotate all the way around. So next at the shoulder, there is no poly caps in this kit. So that is just plastic on plastic on plastic on there, which makes me happy. The main motion at the torso here is up and down, not forward and back. We also have a little extra in here, which allows this to move forward and back like so, ever so slightly. Inside of that, then we have a ball joint. So even without getting to the arm, we've got one, two, three points of articulation, which is awesome. So that does mean we do get that full spin 360 right there. Inside the shoulder joint here, we do have this movement here. So combined with what we have inside the chest, that gives us a grand total of that right there, which is incredible. 
This little thruster segment on top of the shoulder can pop up like so. Full rotation then at the upper arm. It does mention this in the manual, but this is just a single bend at the elbow here. So this isn't double jointed. This does really limit this. I don't know why they went for that. I think it was to keep it old school, but that could be a little bit better. This joint can be pulled out ever so slightly to give you a little bit more. But all in all, that's a little bit disappointing compared to everything else. Also in that little supplementary book we get with it, it mentions a lot of the twisting aspects on this. So we do have a bit of a twist here at the arm. It is very minor, but inside of this, it is definitely an easy modification to chop off a little piece and make that the full twist if you want it. But this is what you get out of the box. Once again, the wrist is awesome. We've got a ball joint as well as this hinge, which allows it to move back and forward like so. Around at the backpack, the thrusters have two points of articulation that allows it to move up like that right there. And we also have the second one, which bends at the midway point, just like so. So when it is all the way down, there is an example of that second bend. Next, down at the waist, and as you can kind of get a glimpse of in there, there is a whole lot going on in there. This upper section of plastic that is loose, so if you do take a listen to this, that is always just loose inside of that. Of course, that is to facilitate all of the movement we actually get out of this, but it is kind of strange to just have a bit just hanging about in there. So now we're moving down to the waist, and this is definitely one of the most intricate joints on the kit, and it is also without a doubt the weakest one. So it doesn't take much at all trying to just bend it forward for it to just pop like so. This is definitely the worst design faux pas on this kit because... Basically because this segment of the torso, which is solid in place, lines up with this little bit that comes up also solid in place. They just touch together and literally you just get some leverage between the two and pop. Doesn't take much at all. But yeah, I'm going to try and look at the ab crunch of the front and the back without this falling apart. And this is incredibly, incredibly weak and kind of annoying at times. Anyway, there it is side to side. Again, awesome, but weak and you can see into it. And because of the raised segments around here, that means you do not get full rotation at that point. All in all, the waist is impressive, but it is a little bit jank at times. So anyway, moving down to the skirting armor, none of that moves. That is the whole point of the design of this thing's diaper. None of it does move, just like in the anime back in 1979. But we do have a whole lot going on inside of that to circumvent the fact that it doesn't move. So, first one, we've got this drop-down gimmick where the whole waist drops down from inside of the diaper. As well as that, we've also got a secondary drop-down for the legs, so the grand total of the droppage is that right there. And if that wasn't enough, we also have this super unique joint in the upper leg, which allows everything to drop down and out like so, like some sort of buttony. Look at that buttony go. Seriously, can Okuyama Design and Bandai trademark that now? The buttony. As for the front perspective of the bend at the buttony, it comes down and out and down even more like so. So that is some crazy articulation. So as for what we get, there is the kick all the way up to the front and that is off the charts crazy because the buttony but as we're out to the back it is a little block there but it does drop down and out giving you that so that isn't really all that bad considering what you do get to the front as for the splits then dropping everything down swinging them out we do actually get the full splits as well so that is impressive so next up then there is that bend at the knee and once again super impressive looking good we also have one of those super mild twists once again down here so it is very subtle it goes from there to there we have a little flappy flappy here at the rear of the ankle and this is quite handy because when it's down like this it will hold the foot in place and stop it from moving which is extremely handy when you pull that out of the way then you actually access more articulation at the ankle so this i like this armor right here usually is attached to this point here but instead we've got this almost 30 minute missions kind of joint right here which just pops on to the ball joint here and can move ever so slightly we also have another little flappy flappy right here at the front and for the ankle then we have this awesome little ball joint right here and this is probably why this was moved 
onto this segment here, away from here. Because we do have the pivot up and down at this point, so there is full rotation there, just a standard peg. We have the up and down right there at the foot, which is fantastic. We also have a killer pivot side to side at the ankle. And we have two, believe it or not, points of articulation in the foot. That is crazy for a high grade. So we've got this one up and down right here. And this one up and down right here. So this is a pretty cool joint here. This pulls out to give it a little bit more, pushes in to lock it in place. And finally now to check out the functional movement on the ground, that is basically what sort of leg poses you'll be able to get without lifting the foot off the ground. So there it is all the way to the front and man, that's crazy. There it is all the way to the back and that is pretty damn good. And there is it side to side. So once again, this is pretty much perfect. Just look at this crunch down into a crouch. That is one impressive leg right there. So yeah, as you'd expect from the high-grade G40 Gundam, the articulation is pretty much perfect. It slays a dab like nobody's business, and I mean this is crazy good. All in all, besides the waist which might pop off every now and then with a bit of rough handling, it is pretty much perfect. However, I could have asked for a little bit more in the arm fold region, but hey, that's just getting picky. But all in all, impressive. Anyway, that right there is it for the review. And all I can say is this is absolutely and utterly fantastic. A unique build like nothing that has ever come before it. This is awesome. And before I actually give this its ranking, which I've already done earlier on, so there's no real point in kind of dragging this out. But sometimes I feel like some people don't actually know how the tiering system works. So the tiering system is brown tier, which means it's absolute shit. Bronze tier, which means it is not up to spec for the grade that it is. Silver tier is exactly what I would expect from a grade. Gold tier goes above and beyond what I would expect from a grade. And Gondarium tier means it's not like that grade at all. That it's kind of brought that grade to a completely and utterly different plane of existence. And that's exactly what this has done. This is high grade in name alone. Because this does not look like, feel like, or be like a high grade, because it isn't really. So that, of course, means this right here, the G40 Gundam is Gundarium tier. Honestly, the only reason I think that someone would not want this right here is because, one, they don't really like the look of the old school Gundam, no matter what way it's changed around or redesigned, or two, they really want something that looks like a scale model of a giant robot, which this doesn't necessarily do. But what it does do is marry that retro toy look with some crazy, awesome, newfangled engineering. And it is a joy to play around with, it's a joy to build, and even if you don't really like the general look of this thing, which I kinda don't, it still is mesmerizing and awesome. But anyway, if you do want one of your own, or if you want any and all Gunpla, then check out that link down there in the description, you can get yours at Hobby Link Japan. As always, thank you so, so much for watching, make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I will see you next time. Once again, this video would not be possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos, including those of you who support me over on my channel memberships and on Patreon, including Kaiser721, Forged Horizons, Vex Bolwick, Tyler Sanders, Frank04484, Caleb Engelhart, Craig Jury, NQG420, and Mark Wu.